baby in your native tongue Sing the words of the wise and the young Show me the place where your words come from Love is a language, love is your native tongue Feel your heartbeat, bang the drum Open up your eyes and fill your lungs The same word from where the stars are flung Love is a language, love is your name When we were young Back before the pendulum Had swung to the shadows I want the world to sing In a native tongue Maybe we could learn to sing along To find a way to use our lungs For love and not the shadows I want the world to sing In a native tongue Before the pendulum 
Welcome to episode 12 of The Tonight Show. Right off the top, I want to point out that comments somehow got turned off. I know we have some people already on chattering about, hey, yep. I can't comment. We're super sorry about that, but uh, we had enough trouble making sure this is all going to go as planned. We don't want to even tamper with it. So, so we chose live stream over your ability to comment. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. So, uh, Wendy... This looks very different in here. I, I'm not There's comfortable people with people looking at us. There's people in the room. Can we, we get a shot? Can we get a shot of them out there? We have our graduating class of 2020. Oh my word! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Wendy, how are you? I'm good. Can you believe it's been 14 weeks? No. Yeah, 14 weeks since we our had our last, last student ministry. Our in-person gathering. Yeah, so this, this feels a little bit more like normalcy, but it's been a long time. A little bit, yeah. Andrew's beard is longer. I know. Maddie's hair is lighter. I feel like I've aged Kitty's gotten years. taller. Matthew yeah. looks like a 18-year-old, 19-year-old. So, oh my goodness. This but it's so, so good crazy. to see faces. It is. It is so good. It is so good. Um, hey, right off the top. We want to just give a, uh, uh, some thank yous, and you're noticing we're addressing you out there in YouTube land, but we also have a live audience, so we're going to be addressing back, both, and forth. But we do just want to say a couple thank yous, because this night has been not 12 episodes in the making, per se, but this is our season finale. It's our season finale, totally. which, is, which is nuts. Yeah. So we're gonna, you're going to hear much more information about that, but we want to say thank you to a few people. One of those people is you, Wendy. Well, I want to say thank you to you. You took over as the student... Uh, director in mm -hmm. January, which is pretty awesome, and I've just had a ton of fun doing the Tonight Show it's with you. It's been a blast. And it's getting even more fun again now that we can begin to have people in a live audience. So, so I thought so. I'd be equipped going into student ministry, and then everything changed. And yeah, so that's pretty much how ministry is. Uh, you think you know what you're doing, and then it all changes up on time. And I'm going to throw back and just say, Brian, thank you for being a great mentor and just for partnering with me in the Tonight Show and just bringing our students and their families this amazing program. Oh, man. It's been so much fun. My pleasure. I want to say thank you to Shauna and her setup team who made Senior Section look so amazing and uh, took all the extra cautions that we needed to make sure that we were following guidelines yep. that we needed to follow to make this event happen. Elijah and his tech team back there. There's amazing. a slew of people that you can't see running media and audio and cameras and switchers. And so thank you so much. The worship team that you're going to get a chance to hear from, we oh just want to say thank you. They're so talented. We heard him in warm up. You guys oh, are man. in for such an amazing yeah. treat tonight. And, and uh, lastly for me, and I know I think you have a special thank you you want to say, but I want to say thank you to the parents who... For the last however many years that your son or daughter is, you've been their Uber, making sure they get from place to place, including places like student ministry, and you allowed them to be a part of a community like this. And uh, we want to say thank you for uh, taking care of the other 166 hours that exist in a week beyond a two-hour student ministry night on a Wednesday night. Uh, your commitment, your love, and your intentionality to parenting. Uh, does not go unnoticed. You have amazing kids, and I know you're proud of them. And so my encouragement to you as parents, as I know this season of change has so much in it, but just take a back seat and just sit back and be proud of who your son and daughter has become. So thank you, parents. And I want to address the seniors. I, want, I just want to say thank you to the seniors for just welcoming me into your world, right, these last couple of years, and just being such an inspiration to me. It's, it's been such a gift to just watch you guys grow and mature in your faith and your relationship with God and just to be in the midst of student ministry. And so I'm just so excited to see what's next for all of you, knowing that you'll always be a part of this community, you'll always be a part of student ministry. That doesn't change the minute you graduate. And so just so grateful for being able to do life with you guys. So thank you to you guys. Yeah, and so if you've never been a part of senior night or graduation night here at Crossman's before, it obviously looks a bit different, but something we do is we do a senior check-in because the seniors have this coveted senior section yep. that they live in when they're here for a service, and so we were trying to replicate some pieces. So are you cool if I do a senior check-in? Go check in with the seniors. All right. Let's do it. So here we go. This is going to challenge you guys out there. Here is senior section. Check it out. It is amazing. There is so much space. The air is fresh. It is wonderful. Over here at the sugars table, I see how many pieces of pizza have you had so far? Three of the eight. That's amazing. Over here at the Merrill family. How are we doing over here? We're doing well. We're doing well. Jason, it's good to see you. Brian? You got an installer since the last time I saw you, which is a pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The Martin clan, how are we doing over here? Fantastic. Fantastic. I see you took advantage of the candy section over there. Oh, my goodness. Andrew, what are you drinking there? That's a, that's a 1988 aged root beer. That is amazing. And uh, uh, Kitty, how are you over here? You doing good? You, have you touched your pizza yet? Have you had any candy? And you're drinking water. What is wrong with you? This is senior <laughs> night. Um, just want to take you back here real quick. Uh, so come on back. We got tons of candy, decor. Again, thank you, Shauna. And tons of drinks. So seniors, you keep helping yourself. And all the people out there wishing that you had one of this in your living room, I'm sorry, but that's senior section. 
Wendy, back to you. Yeah, we've been guarding that senior table all day. You guys have no idea. Everybody want to get into that candy and those treats, so we've really been just protecting that for you. So we just want to take a few minutes and kind of update you guys on what's coming with student ministry. Um, as we alluded to, this is the final episode of season one, and um, we are going to take a break. So we'll be off next week, no The Tonight Show. But we have been renewed for season two. And so on July 1st... We got picked up? We got picked up again oh. for season two. It's going to look a little bit different. And though we got picked up, we just found out they cut it to a miniseries. Oh. So season two will be all of three episodes. And like I said, it's going to look, look a little bit different. The dates for that... I don't know how I feel about that. Because well, when we started this, we were only ever going to do a two-episode run. And they picked us up for 12 episodes, and now they scooped us up for well, a they're giving us the original series. S- they're giving us the original series that they thought they were going to give us. Oh, so that's, <laughs> oh okay. That but it's going to be, like, epic, right? All right. Season All right. two. Yeah, I'll although talk to the now producers, that I said that, it, it makes we sense. have to make it epic. But, yeah, so season two is going to start July 1st. It'll run July 1st, 8th, and 15th. Um, and then um, we, I have another special announcement yeah, coming up. But I want to first cool. remind you guys, we've been talking about July 4th. And that is the Claim Your Campus 2020 get-together where there's going to be this mobilized moment across the United States where millions, the goal is millions Mm -hmm. of students praying all at the same time. It's going to be 1 o'clock Central, our time, at your local flagpole at your school, should the guidelines permit. Okay, and we'll be sending out reminders and more information, but we're just so excited. I'll be in Honeyway Falls, Lima, praying. I know Brian will probably be somewhere in Canandaigua with you guys. Um, But I just think about the different school districts represented within our student ministry and just the areas that will touch in prayer. So that's going to be a really powerful moment for this nation. So I'm excited about Claim Your Campus 2020. Me too. And we have big news tonight, Brian. We have a huge announcement. Are you you guys ready for this announcement? You guys want to know what it is? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Let's roll this video and then we'll talk about it for a minute. I look at Jesus' life, and when he walked the earth, he made people feel seen and understood and liked, loved. You know, I, I, I believe that's how people felt when they were around him. And for me, when I think about reimagining and orienting my life back to the way of Jesus and back to this book, i got to have a heart like Jesus had. You're going to be inspired. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to have a lot of different experiences from day to day as you read God's word. But I promise you, this is how you'll begin to hear the gentle whisper of God in your everyday life. I want desperately for you, for me, for for my church, for my children, for my community to have an experience, experience with God. We should be seeking after him, pursuing him. And regardless of the circumstances in our life, our faith should grow. excited about the idea of NTS camp and it is true we are going to be hosting NTS camp off-site here at Crosswinds Canandaigua campus that's pretty awesome registration is now open so you can go to crosswinds.church it'll be on the app and you can register to attend NTS OS it's going to start July 22nd and it's going to run four Wednesday nights so the 22nd 29th August 5th and August 12th And it's going to look a little bit different, but it's going to have a lot of the same elements that you guys know and love, like team comps. There's going to be a talent show. We're still going to be blue team, right? Go blue team. So we'll have more information coming out in email probably tomorrow. You can register now. NTS camp. We are doing it. I'm so excited. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be possible about a month ago with the way think all the things were going, but it's really exciting that we're going to be able to pull this off. Yeah, and I, we're, I we're love stoked. the time slot. It's a little unconventional. It, it may not feel exactly like an NTS camp, but the whole thing doesn't feel like NTS camp because we're not at Houghton, so right. <laughs> this makes total sense. But it is their camp and their material, Absolutely. and they're providing all of the resources for this. T-shirts, so everything. NTS t-shirts, t-shirts, you get wristbands. swag when you register. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can't wait Stickers. for the swag. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so check out crosswinds.church backslash students. Find out information about NCS camp. And at this time, you're probably thinking, oh, great, we're going to watch another commercial that we've seen 30 times. You'd be wrong. <laughs> We have another thing in place of our commercial time slot, and that's a simple reflection on the things that have happened in weeks past. Check it out. On March 25th, the YouTubes were overtaken by a new drama. Things would never again be the same. 
with moments like these. But let's not forget this. Do you guys remember this? Okay, enough talking. Enjoy these memories of The Tonight Show, a look back at season one. So many memories, so little commercial time. Maybe we'll see some more. Wendy, it's hard to believe that all those moments happened on The Tonight Show. I love the, the reflection. Making. Oh my goodness. I feel like we've aged and evolved all at the same time. Yeah, we aged 10 years in 14 weeks. <laughs> we did. We totally did. <laughs> and uh, we look amazing. Uh, so. Uh, at, we, at this time, if you're familiar with the show, we typically do some kind of game, and we're, we're kind of doing a throwback game to we, the we're first We're going season. back to episode one. Uh, yeah, to the first episode. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So we're playing tonight, Two Truths and a Lie, Senior Edition. And so here's how it's going to work. We have some, uh, some stage hands here. We've got Emma and Hannah, who are ready to go. Emma is going to be using a social distancing microphone contraption, and she's going to be going table to table, and we're going to be hearing from our seniors in the room. And by the way, we know that you may be sitting at home, and you're also a senior, but you just weren't able to join us. And so this service, if I, didn't, I should have mentioned this off the top, this is just as much for you as it is for the seniors in here and for all others enjoying at home. So we do have four specific seniors as well as two of their Connect Group leaders. Yes. So we're playing six rounds of Two Truths and a Lie, and we're going to start over here at Kitty's table. And so this, might, this is going to be awesome. We rehearsed this a million times, so go ahead. <laughs> All right, starting first, Kim, our uh, 12th grade girls connect group leader. In no particular order. Hmm, I'm scared of snakes. Wait, you got to give them all. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't give me those instructions. I had around 20 surgeries. I am missing two congenitally teeth. Uh, never had them after the baby teeth fell out. Wait, what, what was the last one? Your teeth fell out? <laughs> Emma, can you get that I, microphone closer? I didn't I'm just get the last one either. I am congenitally missing two teeth. Never had them after my baby teeth fell out. Oh, oh. whoa. So what was the first one? Um, what was the first one again? I'm scared, scared of snakes. Scared of snakes. Okay. Okay, uh, so two truths and a lie. We're Are we to competing discriminate. against each other? Yeah, we're competing other? against oh each other. Boy. Okay. So I, uh, uh, you, you strike me as somebody that doesn't like snakes, and um, you, I'm going to say the surgeries. Not, she hasn't had 20 surgeries. She's probably had like 19. 19. I think I'm going to go with the uh, dental teeth birth Implosion defect thing, thing <laughs> that I didn't quite understand, but I think you're lying about that. It's probably so snakes. Those are, your, those are your lies that you, that you think? Uh, yes. We're trying to guess the, the truth. Two. Two truths and it's a lie. Oh, yeah, so no, we're lie. trying to pick the lie. Those are the lies. We're yeah, doing yeah. so well here. It's all good. <laughs> we, I, what's this game called again? I, it's called We're Live. Uh, we're Live, okay. What, okay, what you're both this? wrong. It's the snakes. It's the snakes? <laughs> wow, we're really. <laughs> <laughs> zero to zero. All right, we got to go. right where we're we want them, Wendy. All right, all right, all right. All right, we're jumping right on over here to Kitty. All right, Kitty. Two truths and a lie, just so everyone's on the same page, Wendy and Brian, they're going to, she's going to read three read things. Read all three. We have yes. to guess which one is. is the lie. Yes. It's two truths yep. and one. Yes. I got it now. Okay. I'm, re I'm there. Okay. I'm ready. You're tracking? Okay. <laughs> Kitty, hit us. I can deadlift 330. I, can, I play eight sports. I have a horse named Sandy. What was the first one? I deadlift 330.
I'm going to say the first one. I'm going to say the last one. The last one is. Oh, yes! the point goes to Wendy. Point to All Wendy. Right. All right, we are two rounds into this out of six. Two rounds. So we're a, a third of the way there. You and know I love this fractions. This is the season finale, percentage. so. I know, there's a lot yeah, on the line here. A lot of here. pressure. Yeah, there's a, a Starbucks on the line. All right, All right DJ so Jeremy. DJ Jeremy, who <laughs> has not gotten out of his DJ <laughs> equipment yet. <laughs> DJ Jeremy, thank you, by the way, for yes, your live your intro. Piece. Yeah, it's amazing. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. All right. I've won a Euchre tournament, I've won a billiards tournament. I've won a Pokemon tournament. Oh. Well. I know the last ones. Do True. you? Huh? Do you? Well, maybe not now. I mean, he plays Pokemon like, yeah, but they don't like really it's his job. <laughs> Do they really have Pokemon tournaments? Don't they have Pokemon tournaments? They have events. Okay, I don't know. You play Pokemon? I, not anymore. I used to. Okay. So you think it's the Pokemon one? I don't know. I'm gonna. Uh, billiards? Two, I'm still trying to figure out the, okay, how you so play this it was, game. It was uh, Euchre, it's two Billiards, and, and Pokemon. <laughs> I'm trying to, 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 to take out the lie. I'm going to say, what was the first one, Jeremy? Euchre? Euchre. Euchre. You have not won a Euchre tournament. And I'm going to say you have not won a billiards tournament. And I have not won a Pokemon tournament. See? No! I should have thought of my initial. I don't think they have wow. Pokemon tournaments. I have zero. That's what I thought. I See, feel I was terrible right. about myself. All right. Okay. Jumping one seat over. Mr. Graduate Matthew. Okay. I would rather walk... 50 miles, then ride a boat 50 miles to get to a destination. Uh, I ate 18 large pancakes in 18 minutes. Oh. And I never read a book twice. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going number one. The boat. Now, I, know, I know Matthew is like an avid reader. I'm going to say the last one. I'm going to say he, he loves his books so much, he likes reading them more than once. Because that would be wasteful. No, the lie is that he won't read them more. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm going number one. The boat. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing so good. All right, which one was it? It was the last one. The books. The lot. That was it. I got it right. Yep. Oh, you we're tied. Oh wow. my goodness. That's impressive. No, that was the lie. But he. Yeah, two oh. truths and a lie. We're, I'm doing we're so trying well. to okay. find the lie. <laughs> <laughs> this, and we're live. This game was that. invented in, I think, Jesus' 12 <laughs> disciples. I mean, it's been around for 2,000 years, and we and can't figure out And just for the record, it. even though we pre-recorded before this episode, we never did retakes of the games. So. No, yeah, we always got them, you know, one shot. So, all right, we're jumping over here to the mayoral table where we've got Madison. I want to major in art at college. I got sad and cried when I found out I was going to Disney World. And I have a secret passageway in my house. Ooh. I'm going number one. I, I'm going number one, too, because I, I'm pretty sure the other two have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the lie is I want to major in art. Oh, well done. All right, so are we tied? I have two. I got two. <laughs> Thank goodness for a live audience keeping us uh, yeah, on check Yeah, but the tiebreaker so. is Mr. The tiebreaker is Mr. Martin, and I'm really hoping that... Uh, I know these, so. I told All right, you Andrew. To be as obscure as possible. All right. Uh, number one, I DJed at my friend Steven's party. Number two, my first word I spoke was ball. Or number three, I committed my life to Jesus on a toilet. Uh, did you say uh, your, uh, your first word, wait, on the toilet is where you made that decision for Christ? Yeah. That? All right. Uh, Maybe yeah, very relaxing first word was ball, uh, uh, room. Toilet. <laughs> first word was Paul or ball? Ball. Ball. Okay. What was the second one? This is that was the second one. What was the first one? Uh, he DJed I, his. I DJed oh, at my Steven's friend's party. Yeah. Steven's party. I'm gonna say that's true. I'm gonna say your first word wasn't ball. That's mine. I'm going with the toilet. I don't think okay. you your life to Christ on the toilet. The lie was the first one. Oh, we were both wrong. <laughs> Wow, so the, the good, most Ryan. conceivable. So this game oh, went yeah. so well. All right, Virtual that's it. High five. Two truths and a lie. Yes. If you could comment out there, we would ask you how you did, and uh, but that's not an issue right now. So <laughs> we know you're laughing hysterically, so yeah, it's all good. Absolutely. Thank you so much for playing along, and I think we're cutting out to another commercial. We are going to go to commercial, and we come back. We've got live worship. Yeah. Stay tuned. What? Another commercial break? Enjoy these continued look back moments from season one.
Hey guys, so usually a couple weeks leading up to our senior celebration, Brian runs around like crazy with the camera and we get lots of words of wisdom from your fellow student ministry leaders here, the Connect Group leaders, who always have such great words of wisdom. And so while we couldn't gather them all together to be able to do that for you this year, we did have a couple that wanted to share some words of wisdom with you guys as you finish up your senior year, my goodness, here at Crossman Student Ministries. So let's take a look at what some of your Connect Group leaders had to say. Is this thing on? Where's that camera? Oh, over here. Okay. Hey, seniors. First of all, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on your graduation. What a great feat to have accomplished. Whatever you're going to do this next year, whether it's going off to school, doing some other things, I pray that you follow your passion, whatever God has laid on your heart. Don't give up and um, stay in prayer with him. He can lead you and guide you through some of the more difficult times and uh, stay in community with others. People around you are gonna help you on that path. Again, congratulations, and we're so proud of you. Hey seniors, a word of advice for you um, that did really well for me. Um, wait on relationships. You're gonna get a lot of pressure from people saying like, you need to have a boyfriend, you need to have a girlfriend, you need to be dating right now because otherwise you're gonna end up alone forever. Just wait. Um, God has a person for you. Um, but don't just don't just uh, you know chase after people for no reason. Um, not to say that you should just sit back and do nothing, but talk with God about it. Have an active conversation. Um, don't just take matters into your own hands. Play a game. Um, you know, we have emotions. We have feelings. Um, relationships are meant to be deep, and so we should take our time and make sure they are solid. So if you can figure out how to have really good study skills and time to set aside to study and to get your work done, but also time set aside for your friends and to hang out and to go to the coffee shop and to, to, to do stuff together or extracurricular activity, that's gonna be your biggest help. It's not gonna be all academics and it's not gonna be all social. It's gonna have to be both. So don't stress out too much about academics. Don't stress out too much about your status. Find a mix of both, and it's gonna work out for you. I promise. Hey, Crosswinds graduates, we're proud of you. and just wanted to give you a little piece of advice is that just remember that you don't have to have all the answers. Uh, life will unveil itself to you as you live it out. So just enjoy it one day at a time, and remember to keep Jesus first in your life. You'll never regret it. Congratulations. Hey guys, congrats on graduating. You know, in this crazy season that we've been in with everything that's going on in the world, one of the big lessons that I think we're walking away with right now is the need to be flexible and the need to be open to whatever God has in store. You're used to engaging your faith and engaging in youth group and pursuing God in a certain way. And it's very likely that the next path and journey that he has for you is gonna look a little bit different or feel a little bit different. And so the more open you are to what he has in store, uh, the better the experience is gonna be. So we're praying for you, God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Well, this specific night of the year, where we recognize the graduating class has long been my least favorite night of everything I get a chance to do. In high school, I had a friend once say to me that, hey, you are a creature of habit. And not really having ever heard that before, I just asked the question, you know, what is that? And he said, well, I noticed that when the bell rings, you get up, you take the exact same way to the cafeteria every single time, even though it's longer. You get almost the same thing every time when you eat. You sit at the same table with the same friend group every time. When we go out to eat, he noticed that I ordered the same thing off the menu. I sat at the same table. And today, that is still 100% true. I love the creamery. It's one of my favorite eateries in town. And when I go there, I get one flavored ice cream. I don't branch out. And I love to sit at my one table that's over there in the corner. Uh, my friend all those years ago was exactly right. I really do love what is familiar. But like it or not, change is inevitable, and we must learn to embrace it as people. Things cannot always remain the same. Things change in life. That's just the reality. 
And sitting in this room and listening out there at home are the senior class who are all on the path of change. And some of you guys, you're excited. Others are hesitant. A few of you stopped showing up to your classes over Zoom the last quarter, and you're repeating 12th grade all together, so all is fine. So how do we best navigate change? Well, I believe that change is best navigated by wisdom, knowing what to do and how to live life through that wisdom lens that we have. So here's the great news. Having all been part of the ministry of the local church of Crosswinds, I hope you know, this is a question for you, I hope you know that true wisdom comes from who? God said one table. Thank you. You guys know that, right? True wisdom comes from God. You know that's true. Please say yes or else I'm going to really reflect on the last 10 years of my ministry. And uh, no, I'm just joking. So navigating the road of change ahead is best done by seeking out God because he does really hold all wisdom and wisdom is the best way to navigate change. And as you approach the many days of change ahead, you can do so confidently with the wisdom that you've gained thus far in life and you can continue to seek wisdom from God in the many ways in which you've been instructed and taught to this point. So, true to my familiarity or my liking for the familiar, I thought I would share with you, as I do every senior class, a tradition that I do. I like to share my favorite Bible story. And I know this isn't necessarily the last time that I'm going to preach to you or, you know, anything like that. And there'll be others. But this does feel a lot like the conclusion of something that we've had for a long time. And that's why these are my least favorite nights of the whole year. So I first came across my fav Bible story of all time back when I was in middle school. In seventh grade is when I gave my life to Jesus. And I remember I bought a tiny little, I don't know why, but it was a, like a pocket-sized NLT. And I'm not sure I could even read the text today because it's so small. But I would sit in my bed at night and I would just read until I fell asleep, almost nightly. That's kind of how I began to do Bible study as a youngster. And then I came across this particular account in Luke. And I remember pulling that Bible out and I can see the highlights and the question marks and the ha-has near it. Because I remember reading this over and over and I was like, "This, this is funny. This is hilarious. What's happening? What's unfolding before us? So... Before we get there, let me set the stage just a little bit to give you a little bit of context. So Jesus, he's at the end of his earthly ministry, which means that Jesus' crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension, they're all on the immediate horizon for him. So this means what we know to be true about the biblical timeline is that Jesus had been palling around with his disciples, his 12 friends, uh, for about three years or so now, almost daily. I mean, imagine that. Imagine being able to follow around the Son of God for three years. They would have heard Jesus' teachings. They would have seen him perform miracles. They would have witnessed his interactions with the greatest and the least in, the, in, our, in their, their society. These guys would have seen people healed. They would have seen water turned into wine. They would have seen Jesus feed the masses and cast out demons and watch the dead returning to life in that moment when the pigs went off the cliff. He, they would have seen all of that. They witnessed all of this with their time with Jesus. And so let's head to one of my favorite Bible stories. It's found in Luke 9, uh, and I will read it for you um, here. Luke 9, chapter 51, it says this. When the days were approaching for his ascension, he was determined to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went and entered the village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. But they did not receive him because he was traveling toward Jerusalem. All right. So here's the situation. Before coming to know Jesus the way that these 12 disciples had over the last three years, uh, they were faithful Jewish men. And what we understand about culture at that time is that from an early age, they were conditioned to hate this people group called the Samaritans. Now, the Samaritans, they were considered by the Jewish uh, people to be a tainted race. And in their nationalistic pride and in their ignorance, they had this kind of core value of hating this people group. Jews and Samaritans, when you look through scripture, they did not coexist well. They did not get along. Their cultural norms, their tendencies in society, they just would not allow for there to be uh, kind of mutual coexistence. But then Jesus shows up on the scene, and he invites in these 12 guys into a discipleship relationship. And what they quickly discovered is that this guy does not really care a whole lot about cultural norms. He is vastly different than anybody they've ever encountered before. And again, imagine the scene. These guys, they've been learning from Jesus. They've been challenged to rethink their whole kind of worldview by how Jesus is living, what he's teaching, and how he's living it out. 
He's helping them to understand how life could best be lived that would reflect God's true character and not necessarily the societal norms or their upbringings, how they were raised in their towns. But here they go into a village or they're heading into a village to where a people from birth they were conditioned to hate. And uh, this is what happens. Um, And the thing that, uh, sorry, the thing that ticked a couple of them off is that Jesus and themselves, they weren't welcomed. So they're traveling on to Samaria, uh, to Samaria. They sent somebody ahead, and they were not welcomed in this town. So let's see the reactionary response from a couple of these disciples, and that's found in verse 54. It says, when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, I love it, this is crazy, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? The irony here is so comical, especially if you started in the beginning of Luke and you began reading up through and you get to the chapter 9. It's so comical. If you knew biblical timelines in the history of these guys, you'll remember that these are the same 12 disciples that after they watched Jesus feed 5,000 men who were hungry, they later had no faith that God could do the exact same thing when they had a crowd of 4,000 people. And yet now... They're casually asking with great faith, hey, Jesus, do you want us to just command fire to come down from heaven and consume this people group for you? Hey, Jesus, is it cool if we commit mass genocide on this town because they are rude to us and they didn't want to accept us and we just don't particularly like these people? And I love Jesus' response. He says this in the following verses. He says, but he turned and he rebuked them. And he said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And then they went on ahead to another village. Jesus, he strongly disagrees with the words and basically says, you have no idea what you are asking for. You have no idea what you're talking about. What you just requested is so far outside of what God desires for people. And then he reminds them of why he came in the first place. Jesus didn't come to destroy a people group that was rude to them. Uh, He came for a much different reason. He came to save all of humanity. So out of this account, my seniors who are here in person and watching online, I would like to pull out five quick points that deal with change, what we talked about in the beginning, and wisdom, and can be considered in this next chapter of your life. So point number one that we can grab out of this account that's my favorite is that We can listen to Jesus, or we must listen to Jesus and not culture. We live in culture. We are members of our society, and that's a really cool thing. However, it's very easy to latch on to culture and to get our directions, our passions, and our desires from it, to be fueled by what we're watching on a news network or a post by a friend. And James and John were requesting an action from God based on their societal understandings and their normalcies, and that's what was fueling them in this moment. They failed to first seek God and his will and his way. Instead, they opted for their own will and their own way in this particular situation. And so, hear my words, that's no good. That's no good. This is a very dangerous way to live as a follower. Jesus calls us to follow him so that we can live righteously. This is the best way that you and I can live life, when we live it rightly, when we live it righteously. This is a way uh, living, this way of living can be very different than culture at times, but that's what he's called us to do. Um, this is the most, ex- this is the uh, most satisfying and uh, rich things for our soul by following after Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of life. So that's point one. Listen to Jesus, not culture. Point number two that we can grab out of this account is that seek Jesus before you say and do something stupid. Seek Jesus before you say and do something stupid. I bet if the disciples had just perhaps thought about the life that Jesus uh, was living and had revealed to them over the three years of this discipleship relationship that they encountered together, they probably would have said something much different than asking for a fireball to come down from heaven and consume this people group that they just didn't like that much. James and and John, they saw the Samaritan people through the lens of how they were kind of conditioned to feel about them, what society was telling them to feel about them versus recognizing and understanding what God felt about them. And so they jumped to an outlandish ask. And they actually displayed some pretty great faith because they were so passionately against the Samaritan people. They kind of abandoned all that Jesus had been teaching and all that he had done. And uh, I know I have personally been guilty of this in the past, and God's been faithful to rebuke me when I needed rebuking, when I needed correction, and he's helped me to overcome that through training. Uh, So seniors... 
as you venture out wherever it is you may be venturing, whether it's universities, colleges, work, relationships, into families, careers, um, it's very easy to do and say things without remembering the wisdom that Jesus has been instilling in you. He's been teaching you all of these years. And so don't abandon that wisdom so easily. Just stop, pray, seek, and then obey what God is calling you to do in those moments. A second point. Third point is when you fall, get back up and keep following. I love that Jesus rebukes James and John here. I mean, he audibly, in front of everybody, it seems like, calls them out um, for their way of thinking. Now, being corrected is never fun. We don't like that. But I love how James and John, how they handled this rebuking. rebuking. They didn't go on a social media rant about how offensive Jesus was to them. Uh, Instead, they were humbled because they knew what Jesus said was true. And I love that when God rebukes us, it's, it hurts, but it's true, and it's, it's what's best for us. It says that when they, all, when they went to another village, it says that they all went together. Jesus didn't kick John and James out of the discipleship group because they had murderous thoughts in their hearts, but rather he corrected them, and he, began to con- or he continued to train them as he had been doing, and he loved on them by spending the time that he did with them for the remaining time that Jesus was on this earth. It's beautiful, and it's something that we don't often see today. I don't have to tell you that, seniors. I'm sure you're well aware that if somebody has a different opinion than you, then you must be enemies, Um, and that's just not true. They continue to do life together, which is so cool. I love John 10.10. It says the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy, and Jesus says my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life, and I just want to call attention to the thief's role here that Jesus outlines. The thief's only role, the enemy of God's, is to steal, kill, and destroy your life. That's his only existence. That's his only job. And so when you fall, you need to be encouraged and reminded to get back up and keep falling. Never let the enemy convince you that you've done something outside of God's grace. When James and John suggested, or what they suggested, rather, was an awful ask, but Jesus rebukes them, he corrects them, he loves them, and then he continued to extend life to them by continuing to walk alongside of them. The enemy would have loved to have come in and disrupted James and John's relationship with Jesus and put some division in there and, uh, you know, kind of uh, snuck in a lie or two about how they needed to part ways with their faith, but it just didn't happen, and we can't let it happen either. So class of 2020, when you fall, when you sin, get back up, repent, Put your attention, your affections, and your heart back toward the Lord and keep following your Savior, your Lord. Point four. Point four is this. As followers of Jesus, we have to have a heart for the lost. It's amazing how God uses this moment to transform the hearts of these people, John and James. Not only did they come to understand God's love for others, but that would later on, when we see in Scripture, that would be the, the, the fuel for their desires and their passions as they served out the rest of their lives for God well. And seniors, I don't have to tell you, our world is in chaos. It has a lot of brokenness. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of opinions. But please learn from this story. God really does care about all people, the ones you like and even the ones you don't. Look to God to give you a heart like he has for those people in our world that would be considered lost, those that are far from God. Our world needs followers of Jesus who are actually following him, who are not just labeling themselves as such on Facebook. The disciple John would later write an account of Jesus' ministry, and he would recall a command that Jesus gave to his followers. It's John 13, 34, and 35. He says, so now I am giving you a new command This is true of all believers, by the way. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And that takes us to our fifth and final point. Fifth and final point, senior class, is simply follow him. I have so appreciated the years that we've been able to spend together. They have been some of the best years of mine and Becca and now Charlie's life, as some of you have been an active part of Charlie's life. And my family is going to miss you. Your church family is going to miss you. Uh, But our commitment will be back here wherever you go. Hopefully you don't go too far, but wherever you go, our commitment to you will be that we're going to pray for you. We're going to support you. And we're always going to be here uh, for you. And we really do hope that we get to see you often even if it's through digital means, now that we've just lived on Zoom for the last three months. We can still do that, I guess. But at the end of the day, 
as we look back on all these moments, as we think about all the time that we were able to share together, I hope that you remember that the reason for all of this, the reason that we're even sitting in this room tonight is because of Jesus. He is the absolute reason for all of this. We've made some incredible times. We've made some incredible memories. Uh, But Jesus, at the end of the day, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the giver, the maker, and the redeemer of life. And so you need to listen to me here. If you've never listened to anything I've ever said before, you need to listen to this. Jesus, he, he can be uh, counted on. Jesus can be trusted. He will not fail you. Jesus, he will never leave you. He will always love you. He will always forgive you. And he's the one who will always be with you. You can trust in him. He's the only one worthy of being followed. If you do this, seniors, if you do this, if you follow Jesus, I guarantee you at the end of your life, you are going to look back and count it as one that was successful, the most successful. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter what house you live in. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. A life spent pursuing Jesus and obeying him will be the most satisfying thing you could ever do in your life. And so my plea to you would be, please follow Jesus wherever you go. Keep following him. Follow your friend. Follow your teacher, your master, your savior. I love you guys. We're so proud of who you've become. We've so enjoyed these moments. And normally what would happen at this this moment is we would have gathered tons of people around the seniors and laid hands on them and prayed. We still want to pray for you, but we're just going to ask the families to do that. Uh, So if you have a senior at at your table and you want to lay a hand on their shoulder or face, it doesn't matter to me, uh, you can uh, lay a hand on a senior. And I just want to pray over the senior class, and then uh, we're going to go into uh, something else here. Lord, as I look out into this room, um, it's just a small reflection of what you've been doing here uh, at Crosswinds and in this community. And I know that uh, four seniors in this room are are just a, a small symbolic representation of the many seniors that we've had a chance to to see grow up in you, and that's really encouraging. Our world needs followers right now, but I want to pray over these four specifically and for those who are watching and those who have been journeying with us. Lord, I just pray over these seniors as they're graduating, as they're in the midst. I I couldn't think of a worse time to go through a COVID pandemic as as we have been kind of inundated with change. Uh, So much has been disrupted since March. But yet, so much had already been disrupted for these seniors as, as their whole lives are, are, are changing. And this next chapter is, uh, this current chapter is ending and the next chapter is unfolding. And so I just pray that in the midst of change, uh, if you haven't already, God, that you would get a hold of these seniors' hearts, that they would be fiercely following you, that they'd be looking after you, uh, gaining all wisdom, learning all things, seeking correction, rebuking, training, uh, whatever they need from you. Uh, Lord, I pray over them as they go into workplaces, uh, as they go into uh, universities, as they go back into families, into homes, into communities, as they spread out across the world, potentially, um, that, God, you would use them in mighty ways. It's not by coincidence that you've got a hold of their heart at such a young age. Uh, Even on a toilet, uh, God, you were able to uh, call somebody closer to you in relationship. And, uh, Lord, people need to see followers of Jesus right now. They don't need to see pretenders. They need to see followers of you. And so I pray that you would give them courage to be followers of you. And that's going to cost them. That's going to cost them social standings. That's going to cost them uh, moments or activities or opportunities. But Lord, I pray that they they recognize that following you is the most important thing they could ever do. So Lord, I just pray this over the seniors. I just pray a blessing over them that, God, you would keep them. uh, You would hold them and protect them. And Lord, we just love you so much. And thank you again for uh, allowing us to see uh, these young men and women grow up in you. We pray this all in your name. Amen. America is in a crisis. Our nation is divided like we've never seen in our lifetime. On so many levels, America needs healing. Now is the time for our generation to stand up and make our voices count. As middle and high school students, this is our moment to show the world that we believe that God is the only one that can save and heal our nation. Now is the time to unite our voices in the most powerful way we can, in prayer. On July 4th 
at noon central time, we will join as a generation at schools across the nation in prayer for God to heal our land. It is time to stand up, show up, and pray up. It's hard to believe an hour has flown by and yeah. we've come to the conclusion of season one of The Tonight Show. That's amazing. Yeah, 12 episodes in. It was an amazing season. Just want to say thank you so much for uh, tuning in week in and week out for your encouragement, for your support. Um, this was far, uh, far more, um, I don't know, meaningful to us than we ever thought it was going to be and we hope it was a little meaningful for you too. Yeah, just so amazing to be in the presence of our, our student ministry family tonight. Not everybody, you know, just a small fraction, but just such a special evening. Just a reminder that NTS OS camp registration is open on the Crosswinds Church website, crosswinds.church. Um, claim Your Campus 2020, we just talked about that. Um, I know some connect groups are still meeting tonight on Zoom, so I really encourage you guys to just hang in there. We will be back together as a ministry before you know it. So stay connected to your connect groups. It's so important during this time. Yeah, absolutely. Seniors, I hope you continue to enjoy the, the senior collection of candies and over there. And did you have a good time tonight so far? Yeah. Good time tonight? Hopefully you're picking that up at home. We had uh, such a fun time with you guys, but the night is not yet over. While we are concluding, this is the end. This is the end of season one. We'll see you July 1 for our mini-series. Yeah. But there's a bonus content, bonus content specific to our seniors. But if you'd like to follow along at home as well, you're more than welcome to. We're going to say uh, peace out, goodbye, thank you so much. And we have a slideshow of our seniors here at Crosswinds throughout the years. See you later. Good night, everybody. Season two.
has fallen when fear is coming still you're calling me when faith is lost and my hope exhausted you will be my strength 